All right. Now let's address the question that you are undoubtedly asking. How do you take this course? What are you going to be doing on a daily basis? Well, first thing you'll notice is that this class is a four credit hour class. That means you're meeting four times a week. Sometimes for your benefit, in other words, to spread the work out a little bit, I will assign um, an assignment on the fifth day. But most of the time you guys are meeting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Each Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and Thursday, you'll have a new assignment. Now, I post reminders about these assignments in the announcement section of Blackboard. But you'll also notice that you had available to download a schedule. And what you'll see is this schedule lists your, lists your daily assignments and the date you're supposed to do the assignment. So, for example, um, this semester, this is a fall semester from a previous year. You'll notice that on the 18th of August, you're supposed to listen to lecture five and lecture six. Then you're supposed to take a lecture quiz and do the homework. And we'll go through each one of those three pieces individually, don't worry. Um, but I want to address the date situation first to make sure we're very clear about what it is you're supposed to be doing and when you're supposed to be doing it. I have two date columns here. This first date column is the date column you're supposed to do every single assignment. If you want to pass the class, if you want to pass the class with a good grade, if you want to pass the class with a minimum of stress and anxiety, these are the dates you should work off of. People who pass the class work off the dates in this first column here. Now, that having been said, I understand that life happens. Trust me. I've been in your shoes, right? Um, I understand that you could be sitting down um, to do your homework on the 18th here. And just as you um, log into Blackboard, your kid comes and throws up in your lap, right? You know you're not going to be getting much homework done that night. Um, you could be driving home from work planning to sit down and do this homework as soon as you get home. Your car breaks down on the West Kentucky Parkway, and goodness knows there's so many cell phone dead zones along the West Kentucky Parkways, and it could be hours before anybody park, um, comes along to help you out. So no work's going to be there. i done that, that day. I understand life happens, right? To account for life happening, in other words, to account for your kids getting sick and account for you getting sick, in order to account for your boss calling you into work a double. I have what's known as a late date. This is considered, I, in other syllabus, is like, I'm calling it a late date now. I'll often lapse into calling it an emergency date. I have this second column. This second column is your emergency date. If you do this work after the emergency date, the work is considered late. In other words, just to clarify, these things should be done on this date if you want to pass the class. However, I won't penalize you in terms of points until this date. For the majority of the class, class, there is a week between the date you should do an assignment and the time I consider it late. However, Towards the end of the class, that time un starts undergoing a compression. Like if here it begins whittling to six days, then it drops to five, then it drops to a one-to-one -one turnaround in some cases. So make sure you realize that you're not always going to have that week. Sometimes you're going to have a one-to-one -one turnaround towards the end of the class. Another reason you should be working off the to-do dates as opposed to the emergency dates. Another reason you should work off this date as opposed to this date is as you take this class, you will have questions for me, right? If you don't have questions over me, then you either need to go hug your um, high school chemistry teacher and tell them they did an awesome job, B, you're a genius, or C, I am such an awesome teacher that I taught you right in the lecture, and you don't need to ask any questions because I am totally awesome. And if I'm totally awesome, 
that's fine. However, chances are you are going to have questions, right? If at some point during the semester I'm not challenging you a little with these homework questions, then the class is too easy for you and you should probably be in a higher level chemistry, right? If you know everything the first time you – if you know all your homework questions the first time you try it, then chances are this class is a little too easy for you. Um, so it's natural to have questions. I've already talked to you about the best way to – the best way to ask um, questions via the question help message board. But in terms of homework questions, and I'll show you where the homework questions are real quickly, but before we go to where those homework questions are, every time somebody asks me a homework question, I generate a flash movie to answer that homework question, and I store that flash movie um, in your Blackboard shell. So chances are um, somebody else may have already asked the question that you're, you, you have over a, a homework question. If you look in your course shell, whether it's 180 or 170 or 140, you'll see that I have a folder labeled Worked Homework Problems. If you go to that, you'll see I've divided up by chapter answers to homework questions. For example, Chapter 8. See, I've people have already asked over 813 points Part C in the class. I answer these questions using one of three formats. First, I use YouTube videos a lot, right? Also, I love to use what are known as live scribe videos. The reason I love to use live scribe videos is they're very quick and they're very easy for me to generate. 99.9% .9 of the time, that's actually the format I'll answer questions in. Um, oh, good grief. I had pulled up two um, live scribes and they appeared to have disappeared. So let's take a look at um, two of them here. Let's take a look at this one first. You open up this live scribe, and what you'll see is you've got some green ink here, right? And it looks like it's just handwriting. It's not. There is audio attached to it. To get to that audio, what you have to do is you see this blue web address up here, and this is for PC users. Mac users, I'm going to show you separate directions here in a second. For PC users, first of all, I recommend you're in Chrome. You click this is web address, live scribe player. And it sends you to this weird looking screen. It then asks you to choose a PDF. You can drag and drop a P your LiveScribe PDF here, or you can choose it. I saved that LiveScribe to my desktop earlier, um, or at least I thought I did. Where did you go? My love, my love, I want to know. Oh, 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 oh. Where did you go? Okay. Um, Ah, let's try this one. There's the PDF that I downloaded to my computer. I click open. The LiveScribe player opens it, and um, what you'll see here is you'll see a play button. You hit play, and I've muted the sound, but you're, you should be hearing audio, and what you'll notice is, let me fast forward a little bit. What you'll see is that the green handwriting begins to appear in sync with the audio. So it's really just like you were sitting in my office and I was writing this down on a sheet of paper to answer your question. It is a wonderful tool. Um, if you have a PC, it's really easy. Save the PDF to your desktop, download it into the player, as long as it has that URL there. There is another type of LiveScribe that you don't have to load into the players, and it's an older form of LiveScribe. Uh, let me see if I can find one of these. I bet this is one. Nope, that's one of the newer types. Um, ah, yes. I don't have my Adobe Reader up to date. For the older type of Adobe Reader, all you have to do is update your Adobe Reader, and if your Adobe Reader is up to date and it's not playing with audio, then um, what you need to do is you need to um, 
save the, the PDF to your desktop, and then open it in Adobe Reader. A lot of times your Adobe Reader on your computer will be up to date, but the plugin in your browser for Adobe Reader will be out of date, which is what the case I have going on here. If I save this to my desktop and then opened it up, it would play audio as well. So whenever I answer a question for you in homework, and if it's a live scribe PDF like I've showed you there, there is audio. Now, Mac users, A, you have more money than I if you can afford a Mac. Um, B, you have to go through a little extra hoop in order to listen to the live scribes. If you're a Mac user, go to livescribe.com. I want to write this down. Livescribe.com. Go to support. Click Echo. Support. Click Echo. And download the desktop. You can do this if you have Windows, too, to play Livescribes. But if you have a Mac, you have to download that Echo desktop. There, there's no other way to do it. You have to download that Echo desktop if you are using a Mac. Um, and they will work for you. All right. Um, you can't play them in PDF format if you have a Mac. And, that, and remember, by Mac, I mean iPad. If you have an iPad or an iPhone, you can go and download um, the LiveScribe app. And that works really well. Matter of fact, I have several people who have PCs and will just download the app because they have an iPad and, and um, play the videos that way. Um, but if you ask me questions over the homework, I have these great tools that provide not just written answers to your questions, but audio answers to your questions as well. So it's a really, really great tool for you there. Um, but I digress. All right, back to the schedule here. So on the 18th of August, you're going to listen to a lecture and you're going to do the homework. If you have questions over the homework, you're going to post a question on that question help message board. And it may be the next day before I answer it. If you're working off this date, you don't have a problem, right? You do the homework on the 18th. You have a question over something. You've got an answer the 19th. So you can still get the homework done before it's assessed any of these. However, if you wait until this date to do the homework and you have a question, it may be the 26th until I answer it, right? In which case, you've lost 2.5% of your grade for the assignment because that's my late penalty. So it's a very good idea if you want to do this course stress-free and get as much help as possible to work off this date as opposed to this date. I will tell you right now, the students that get A's and B's nearly universally work off these dates as opposed to these dates. If you are working off these dates, you are running late. Let me be very clear. If you are working off these dates, these emergency dates, these late dates, and you're treating them like due dates, then you are behind in the course, and that will catch up with you that last week or two of the class. Don't work off those late dates. If you find yourself working off those late dates, find a way to catch up. Pull an all-nighter. Um, send the kids to grandma for a weekend and lock yourself in the room. Tell your, tell your friends that you're not going to be go able to go out this weekend because you got to catch up on chemistry. Do whatever it takes to get caught up. Have the chemistry flu from work. Not that, no. Actually, I had the physics flu once, but at any rate, um, as an undergrad. But at any rate, um, do whatever it takes to get caught back up so that you're working off of these dates as opposed to these dates. All right. So if we look at what you're doing, you're going to be listening to a lecture. Listening to a lecture in an online class? You mean I'm not just doing a bunch of reading? No. There's actually a lecture for you to listen to. Again, if you go to your homework shell, you'll see a folder labeled Dr. Kelly's Lectures. You click those, and I have your lectures divided in folders by chapter. So you go to Chapter 8. First thing you'll notice in all my chapter folders, or nearly all of them, there are a couple um, chapters I do jazz style, meaning I'm doing the lecture off my top of my head. But most of my lectures I do based on some overheads that I've written beforehand. I provide you with these overheads so that you can print them and take notes. One of the secrets to passing this class 
is to treat it just like a face-to-face -face class, right? In a face-to-face -face class, you would never dream of just sitting there staring at me eating popcorn, right? I mean, I know I'm entertaining and that people feel I'm better than most movies. Um, however, you'd still take le lecture notes, right? If you were sitting in a face-to-face -face class, you would be taking notes. You have to do that with this online class. I mean, you will discover doing your homework that there are some homework problems that I work as an example during my lecture. And every once in a while, a student will ask me the answer to a question that I already worked as an example. And that tells me right away they're not taking notes and that they're in trouble, right? Take notes for this class just like you would a face to face class. To help you with that, I've provided my overheads for you. Now, these are just overheads for you to print and take notes on. They don't have any of the words I say on them. They don't have any of the problems worked out. However, they do have the problems without the solutions on them, right? So print these lecture notes out and use print these notes out and use them to take notes on as you listen to the lectures. Now, most of my lectures are on YouTube. And if your computer can't run YouTube, use a college computer. Um, I can't think of any computer out there, Chrome, Mac, anything, that doesn't um, play YouTube. And what you'll notice is it's not a stagnant video here. You'll notice that I have a pen that writes on top of um, the overheads. There's audio. I've muted the audio kind of here. But you need to watch and listen to those lectures. In order to encourage you to listen to those lectures, what I'll do is I'll say things like, write down Cincinnati Bengals. I hope everybody's writing down the Cincinnati Bengals. This is not a drill, by the way. You need to write down Cincinnati Bengals. I will tell you during the course of the lectures to do things like write down Cincinnati Bengals. And after you listen to your lectures for the day, you're going to go to Mastering Chemistry. See that link right there to Mastering Chemistry? Click that. And there'll be a little bit of a load delay. And it will take you to a screen that looks kind of like this. I don't have the ability to look at a, a, um, look at a student screen. But it'll take you to Mastering Chemistry. And Mastering Chemistry will have all your assignments. I would warn you, danger, Will Robinson. Danger, danger, danger. The schedule in Mastering Chemistry on this calendar is based on late dates. You do not want to work off these dates in Mastering Chemistry. These are the late dates, right? I would ignore these calendar dates because they're the late dates, right? Mastering Chemistry, I have to put the dates in off of the emergency date column. You want to be working off this column. So what I would do is instead of looking at your calendar view for your assignments, I would look at your assignments by clicking the assignment buttons and come on and looking at them in list view. And what you'll see when you get to Mastering Chemistry is you'll see that you have lecture quizzes. Every single day you listen to a lecture, you're going to take a lecture quiz. See, um, back to our model day here, you listen to lecture five and six, then you're taking a lecture quiz over those dates. So you'll take a lecture quiz. And what you'll notice about these lecture quiz quizzes is these lecture quizzes have nothing to do with chemistry. Right? Dr. Kelly told you to write down which of the following words. These words have nothing to do with chemistry. The only way you can know these words is if you listen to the lecture. It's my way of guaranteeing that you listen to the lecture. Since I have started doing this and forcing people to listen to the lecture by writing down keywords, I have gone from, I have inverted my failure rate, right? Um, I've gone from five out of 30 failing. I've gone from five out of 30 people passing to five out of 30 people failing. Um, so the effects of, of forcing you to write down these keywords has been dramatic. Um, so it's really important you listen to those lectures because 5% of your grade is going to come off of these lecture quizzes and these um, bizarre and random words and it's probably a scary insight into my psyche, psyche over what I was thinking about those days. Uh, all right. So that's the lecture quiz portion and then you're going to do your homework. And the homework is the traditional sort of homework that you come to expect when you take a chemistry course. 
mastering chemistry is based on my labs plus you can see the name there uh, if you had college algebra in the system chances are you've used my lab it's by far the easiest best interface out there I've, I've tried two other different interfaces for this course and they're just hideous so this is by far the best interface so you'll do your homework and the homework are those problems that you're used to seeing in the back of the book couple notes about the homework is I have the homework set so that you get six attempts on every single question except multiple choice you get six attempts for a question so you can try a question two or three times before you have to come and ask me about it that way you get to wrestle with the problem a little bit it also means by giving you six attempts I want you to get these questions right right now I would note that every single time you answer a question wrong it does deduct three percent of that total points right but you could use up five of your six attempts and still get an 85 on that question right question so I have this homework almost as a rigged game in addition to giving you all these attempts at a very low point penalty you'll notice throughout the course of the semester I don't have many at the start but especially towards the end of the semester I am shoveling bonus questions at you. Matter of fact, I believe there's a, a um, homework question where all the questions are bonus points. I want a student who does all the homework questions to get 100% on the homework. The homework is to help you study for those chapter exams, not to penalize you for them. I really want you to do well. I really want you to do as well as the Pittsburgh Steelers do on a yearly basis. Would you please write down Pittsburgh Steelers? Why doesn't everybody write down Pittsburgh Steelers? I know everybody's writing down Pittsburgh Steelers. So homework, lots of bonus points. Going to do it on a daily basis. Um, you can get a problem wrong five times and still get an 85 out of 100 on it. So there's really no excuse for everybody not getting an A on this homework if you're doing it all. In addition to these lecture quizzes and homework and lectures, you will have chapter tests and you will have um, exams. First of all, before you have to take a test, you'll do homework assignments that are labeled EOC for end of chapter questions. By the time you get to the end of chapter questions, you've gone over all the content for the chapter. Therefore, you should be able to work these end of chapter questions almost as a practice test. The end of chapter questions are a little bit harder than the other homework questions, but still, they're review. They're not introducing anything new to you. So as you work these end of chapter homework questions, if you find yourself struggling with some of them, you need to iron out the areas that are causing you to struggle on them. Before you take this chapter test here, you should understand everything that you covered in those end of chapter questions. You should rework any problem you got wrong or struggled with working those end of chapter questions before you take that chapter test. Also, you should study your lecture notes. You should review your lecture notes. You should recopy your lecture notes. One thing that amazes me is I'll talk to students and I'll discover that they go, they sit down to take these chapter tests without having a quick reference sheet. Folks, if it's a face to face class or an online class, you should have two or three pages worth of recopied notes that summarize the chapter that you're using to study the night before an exam. Heck, this is an online class with an unproctored exam. You should have a quick reference sheet there in front of you when you take the test. Right? Creating that quick reference sheet where you've listed your formulas, put things in your own words, helps you study. You should know that quick reference sheet backwards, forwards. You should be able to close your eyes and write down that reference sheet without looking at it before you take that chapter test. That having been said, chapter tests are only worth 20% of your grade. 
these chapter tests are almost graded practice tests. As a matter of fact, when I first started um, teaching online, I didn't grade these chapter tests. I made them voluntary and called them practice tests, but nobody took them or nobody took them seriously. And therefore, I've made them worth 20% of your grade. These chapter tests are filled of questions pulled randomly out of a large pool, meaning that the chances are you're going to have a totally different chat test from somebody else in the class, everybody else in the class. However, these random questions for these chapter tests are drawn out of the same pool that your exams will be taken out of. Every exam, here we are, every exam covers at least two chapters. Some will cover three or four chapters. But these exams are drawn from the same pool questions as your chapter tests. As soon as you take a chapter test, you're able to see your grade, you're able to see what you got right and what you got wrong on that chapter test. Use your chapter tests as a study guide before the exam. Before you take an exam, you should go back and rework those chapter tests. The whole reason I am giving you these chapter tests is to encourage you to study them and use them as study guides. Most students will raise their exam score 10% from tests because they go back and study those chapter tests. If you get something wrong on a chapter test, figure out why it's wrong, right? I'm letting you see your wrong answer. I'm letting you see what the right answer is. Go back and study the material that you got wrong on those chapter tests before you take the exam. A typical student, for example, will get 70% on their, on their um, chapter tests, right? And by studying those chapter tests, they'll get 85 or higher on their exams because they've gone back and studied what they missed on those chapter tests. And let me also tell you something. This is a science class. If you've had only liberal arts class up to now, you may be unfamiliar with the way chemists view grade grades. C means competent, B means above average, A means awesome, right? C means competent, meaning C is a good grade, right? If you say, Dr. Kelly, I got a 70, I'm torn up, I don't know what to do, I'm going to say congratulations. You just have a few things you need to iron out, right? Just so you know where chemists look at in terms of grades. All right. Um, so that's what you're doing on a daily basis. Your homework, your tests, and your exams are all in do 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 are all in mastering chemistry. Where are they? See chapter tests here and exams. Both your chapter tests and your exams are timed. The number of questions will vary on your luck of the draw as will your time period on luck of the draw. Randomized here, but they are timed, so be aware of that. You can't start and stop them. Also, your homework will let you do your home. Your homework, you can do it late for a 2.5% penalty. If you attempt to do a chapter test, where's chapter test? Do, 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 do. If you attempt to do a chapter test, let's say this example, for example, this chapter test here is due the 7th. If you attempt to do this chapter te test on the 8th, it won't let you. You need to email me and ask me to extend the test for you. If you're running late, past the late date for a test or an exam, you have to email me to be able to take that test. Why? Because I want to scold you for being late not scold you, that doesn't serve any purpose, right? But I want to stress the fact to you about exactly how much trouble you're in in terms of the schedule. Because if you're doing something after this date, you are in danger of failing, right? If you're not caught up, if you're doing something a day after the late date, then you should be in utter panic slash crisis mode and you should be considering withdrawal from the class, right? It's that serious. And I want to stress that to you which is why I have these things locked, so that if you try doing them after this date, you have to email me. All 
All righty, trying to think of anything else in terms of taking the class. Oh, another thing about this class. This is a four-hour class, right? That means you're going to have 60 minutes of lecture each day. That's four hours a week of lecture of you listening to me on YouTube. Then the National Accreditation Agency, SACS, says for every one hour you spend listening to me, I am to provide you with two to three hours of homework, four hours class times three hours of homework. That's 12 hours of homework. 12 plus four is 16. If you are spending 16 hours a week on this class, good. That's what you're supposed to be according to the accreditation agency. Not me, according to the accreditation agency. I have provided you with those four hours of lecture. I have then, each one of those homework assignments you see on there, each one of these blocks, for example, according to the national average, right, the, the master in chemistry program I use to create these assignments tells me nationally how long it takes for the average student to complete those assignments. I set the average time for each one of those homework assignments at an hour. Some of you will do them faster than an hour. Remember, it's an average, right? That means some do them faster, some doers do them slower. So it's going to take you at least an hour to do these homework assignments, maybe two. In addition to doing the homework, what should you be doing? You should be recopying your notes. And for some of you, you should be reading the textbook as well. So you should be planning to spend at least an hour on the homework and at least an hour on reading and recopying your notes. Maybe two hours on the homework or maybe an hour and a half on the homework and an hour and a half on your notes. If you're not spending a minimum of 12 hours on this a class, uh, 12 hours a week on this class, you're not going to pass. You should be aiming at, at, at spending between 12 and 16 hours a week on this class. Make it a habit, folks. Make chemistry a daily habit for you. It should be your favorite habit. Block out time. Don't let this um, class be something that just happens to you. If you were in a face-to-face -face class version of this with me, you would know you would be coming in at 9 a.m. every morning and sitting down and staring at me. Find a time every single day when you can sit down at this computer and stare at me. Maybe it's 8 a.m. in the morning after you get off your night shift of work. Maybe it's 11 p.m. at night after you put the kids to bed. But find that four-hour chunk where you're going to block it off. It doesn't have to be four-hour chunk. But find on paper, write down, get a sheet of paper, make a schedule, write down what 16 hours a week you're devoting to me every week. 16 hours a week. It could be eight hours on Saturday. As a student, I was a marathoner. I hated doing an hour here and an hour there. I'd sit down and I'd do eight hours of, of work at a time on a single class. Yes, that tells you I spent my Saturday afternoons and my Sunday afternoons and my Saturday and Sunday evenings, quite frankly. Right? 